Hello and welcome to this session of CCNP Encore series. In this session, I will discuss about hierarchical LAN design model, a fundamental concept in enterprise network architecture. By the end of this lesson, I'll make sure you understand what is the hierarchical LAN design model, what are the benefits, and the three layers of hierarchical design model, and some use cases. Imagine a massive organization again like a Walmart. These type of organization have countless devices and users spread across multiple buildings or floors. So how do we ensure efficient communication, easy management and high availability for such networks? The answer lies in the hierarchical land design model. So what is the hierarchical land design model actually? The hierarchical land design model divides the enterprise network architecture into three layers. Access layer, distribution layer and core layer. The access layer gives endpoints and users direct access to the network. Whereas distribution layer provides an aggregation point for the access layer and acts as a services and control boundary between the access layer and the core layer. And the core layer, also referred to as backbone, provides connection between distribution layers for large organizations or large environment. So this modular design approach is scalable and easy to manage as it eliminates the complexity of fully uh, flat meshed network where a change in one part of the network could disrupt the entire system. You can think of it as a organizing a library. Like instead of throwing all the books into a single pile, you create sections and categories to make everything accessible and easier to manage. Let's look at some of the benefits of this model. First one is fault containment. Any changes or issues in one layer will not affect the others. Then there is a scalability because each layer can be replicated to accommodate growth. Like for example, if you want, uh, if you have more users, you can just add the access layer. If you have uh, multiple buildings, you can just add the distribution or core layer. And then simplify troubleshooting. These type of modular layers allow problems to be isolated more easily. Like if you have a problem, with the user, then you can troubleshoot on the access layer. If you have problem with the routing between the access layer, then there is a problem with the distribution layer. Then there is a network resiliency. It ensures minimal impact when a component is taken offline. For example, if I take a one access layer switch, it will not affect others. So these are the benefits. Let's look at each of these layer in detail. Starting with access layer. Access layer also known as, uh, commonly known, uh, referred to as network edge, where the endpoints connect. It provides high bandwidth connectivity for wired and wireless nodes, that is wireless and wired endpoints. Wired and wireless devices such as PCs, Laptops, IP phone, printers, wireless access points, personal telepresent devices and IP video surveillance cameras, etc. are part of this access layer. I mean to which, I mean uh, these are the devices which connect to the access layer device. Access layer plays a crucial role in enforcing security policies. Because uh, if you want to block unauthorized access, this is the place. It supports segmentation by using VLANs for better management and performance. All the segmentation using VLAN is done on this layer. It also establishes uh, the quality of service trust boundary for a seamless user exp experience. For end users, the trust boundary starts from here. Access switches, wireless access points and IP phones are mostly part of the access layer. So in the hierarchical LAN design, the access switches are not interconnected to each other, right? 
So communication between endpoints on the different access layer switches occurs through the distribution layer switches. As you can see, there is no direct connection between the access layer. Any communication has to go through the distribution layer. And uh, to prevent service outages, it is recommended to use access switches with redundant supervisor engine because there is no redundancy. I mean, uh, the traffic has to go to the distribution. So it's better to have a redundant supervisor engine on the access switches. Then we have distribution layer. The primary function of the distribution layer is to aggregate access layer switches in a given building or campus. It provides critical boundary functionality. At layer 2, it limits the propagation of uh, STP. And at layer 3, it summarizes IP routing information to reduce complexity. The distribution switches need to be deployed in pairs for redundancy because it ensures redundancy by deploying pair of switches interconnected with layer 2 or layer 3 links. In large organization, for example, with uh, geographically dispersed buildings that has multiple access layer switches, if you see on the left, most, I mean, we, we, multiple distribution layer switches are also required for this switches to communicate because it can minimize your costly fiber optic runs by strategically placing them in different buildings. If you have like uh, in this topology, you will see very less switches. If you have a big organization, you will have hundreds of switches. And then uh, if you connect them in full mesh, then it will be a mess. Distribution layer can solve your problem by reducing the cables uh, run between the different buildings. If the network expands beyond three distribution layer in a single location organization, then you should consider adding core layer to optimize the design. So let's go ahead and discuss about the core layer. Core layer is the top layer in the hierarchical land design model. It is also It also serves as the backbone of the network. It interconnects the distribution layer and other key network blocks like uh, data centers, private clouds and vans or internet edge. It provides high speed connectivity to handle large volumes of traffic. And uh, it has higher scalability for growing networks and then high availability and fast convergence for quick recovery in case of failure. It significantly reduces uh, network complexity, especially in large enterprises, by minimizing the number of interconnection required. Like it will connect a lot of distribution blocks. As you can see, uh, the core layer reduces the network complexity from n into n minus 1 to n links for n distribution. As you can see, I have uh, from each router, if I have a full mesh, from each router, I will have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So if you multiply it by uh, the number of distribution, then you will have that number of uh, connectivity. But if you are using core layer, then the number of connectivity from distribution layer decreases. So that is the advantage of having core layer. Some of the practical uses of hierarchical design are like the number of layers are needed depending on the characteristic of the network deployment site. As you can see, for small network, two layers are required. For example, for a single building, only the access and distribution layer might be necessary. I mean, uh, necessary. And for large network, like uh, the large campuses with multiple buildings, all three layers are implemented to ensure efficiency and scalability. As I said, like uh, if it crosses more than two distribution layer, then it's better to go for uh, core layer. So these two type of design are also known as two tier and three tier design, which we will discuss in the next session. So to conclude this, I would say the hierarchical land design model is the cornerstone of the modern network design. It provides, I mean, modern enterprise network design. It provides the structured approach for designing scalable, efficient and manageable networks. Thank you for watching. Please do like 
comment, share and subscribe. And also please do not forget to check out my courses on Udemy. I'll be sharing the link in the description below. Thank you for watching.